After the master Abdu'l Baha, Shoghi Effendi's supreme relationship was with the greatest holy leaf. Ahmad al Baha Rahia Khanum tells us this love the guardian had for the greatest holy leaf, who had watched over him for thirty five years, was far more than that of a mother, and continued to be demonstrated for the remainder of his life. When the news of her death reached him, he was in Switzerland and his first act was to plan for her grave a suitable memorial. No one could possibly call this exquisitely proportioned monument built of shining white Carrera marble anything but a love temple, the embodiment of Shoghi Effendi's love. In some of the most trenchant and moving language in all of Shoghi Effendi's writings, he bewails the loss of his sole earthly sustainer. Here are a few lines from that tribute. Dearly beloved, greatest holy leaf, through the mist of tears that fill my eyes, I can clearly see, as I pen these lines, thy noble figure before me, and can recognize the serenity of thy kindly face. I can still gaze, though the shadow of the grave separate us, into thy blue, love-deep eyes, and can feel in its calm intensity the immense love that it's bare for the cause of thine almighty Father, the attachment that bound thee to the most lowly and insignificant among its followers, the warm affection that is cherished for me in thine heart, the memory of the ineffable beauty of thy smile shall ever continue to cheer and hearten me in the thorny path I am destined to pursue. In her biography on the life of Shoghi Effendi, the Priceless Pearl, Rahir Khanum breaks the life work of Shoghi Effendi into four categories. First, his writings and translations. Second, his program for the expansion and consolidation of the material assets of the faith. Third, his establishment of the administrative order and fourth, his implementation of Abdu Baha's Tablets of the Divine Plan. Oh. 
Shoghi Effendi's 17,500 letters and cables written during the course of his 36-year guardianship comprised his guidance to individuals and institutions on a myriad topics. Indeed, many of them have already been collected together in over 20 books to serve as instruments of policy and counsel for developing institutions and the evolution of human souls. God Passes By was Shoghi Effendi's only book. He researched over 200 books before writing. The entire work was written out in longhand and then typed on this tiny portable using the two-finger hunt and peck method. God Passes By was completed in time to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the Baha'i Faith. It was the definitive history of that century. Yet today, few outside of the faith are aware of its existence. Rehe Khanum tells us that English was the language Shoghi Effendi had given his heart to, and that Edward Gibbon was the English writer he admired above all. His work, The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire, was a book that Shoghi Effendi ever kept by his side and was with him at his bedside when he died in London in 1957. Perhaps not surprisingly, early in his ministry, Shoghi Effendi set his hand at translating the revelation of Baha'u'llah. If the Baha'is of the West were to be recreated to perform the tasks destined for them in this cause, they had to have access to the revelation, which at that time existed principally in Persian, Arabic, and some Turkish. In 1931, Shoghi Effendi completed his translation of the Kitabi Igan, or Book of Certitude, which, after the Kitabi Akdas, is the foremost book of the Baha'i Revelation. Over the years he completed gleanings, prayers and meditations, epistle to the son of the wolf, and others. And we cannot forget his masterful translation of Nabil's narrative, The Dawnbreakers, that unchallengeable textbook the source of inspiration in all literary and artistic pursuits, an indispensable preliminary to future pilgrimage to Baha'u'llah's native land, and an unfailing instrument to allay distress and resist attacks of a critical, disillusioned humanity. Baha'i literature has now been translated into more than 800 languages, and every translation is based on the English translations of Shoghi Effendi. Lest we forget, it should also be noted that through 12 volumes of the Baha'i world, some running over 1,000 pages in length, Shoghi Effendi acted as editor-in-chief. As Riyakonam notes, he had an infinite capacity for work. In all of the Guardian's undertakings, he was guided by three great documents of the faith, the three charters, the Tablet of Carmel, revealed when Baha'u'llah pitched his tent on Mount Carmel in 1891 and chanted this tablet which prophesied the development of the spiritual and administrative centers of the faith on God's holy mountain